Welcome to your first pottery class. My name is Emily and I will be your instructor. But first, I'd like to ask you all a question. What is your earliest memory of feeling proud of yourself? I'll give you a second. I don't know, maybe it's hitting your first home run in Little League or holding your baby brother for the first time. Maybe you have something in mind. Well, here's mine. I'm in second grade, smiling for a yearbook photo, and I remember penciling in every single stitch on that shoe. Nowadays, I look for new ways to be creative. I'm currently a medical student at Dell Medical School, studying design focused in health, and one of my physician mentors recently took up salsa dancing lessons in her free time, and I decided to take up some pottery lessons in mine. And now I actually dug up one of the very first pieces of pottery I had ever made, pretty much around this age. Here it is. It's made with a lot of love and lots of colors. But now I'm just a bowl-making machine. I kid, I am no expert in ceramics, but I am extremely curious about how creativity can inform what we do professionally, and how these two things are not necessarily mutually exclusive. Now, I know, I know, you found yourself in this pottery class today, something that you did not sign up for, but how about I walk you through crafting a bowl of your own, and I'll share some healthcare stories along the way. Okay, start off with some raw materials. Your clay. This ball of clay in your hands is your newly formed team at work or at school. And you might be thinking, oh, I'm really not too sure about this new team I got placed on. You might not be as pretty or put together as you'd like. Well, this happens to us in the hospital, sometimes by the week, sometimes even by the day. We're put into new teams with doctors, nurses, medical students like myself, social workers, you name it. And on these new teams, we really don't know each other at the start of a new day. Kind of like how you're finding yourself maybe a little uncomfortable in your first pottery class, sitting next to a stranger. But don't worry, go ahead, grab an apron, settle in, you're here anyway, might as well have some fun, right? Well, that brings us to lesson number one, embrace Play. play humanizes everyone on our team, allowing us to bring our whole selves to what we do. Now, in medicine, we wear white coats that quite literally signify sterility. But many of us came into medicine wanting to comfort patients and empathize with them, so we must make these spaces more human. And one of the most memorable teams I was on in the hospital actually did icebreakers every single day of the week. Now I know who wants to be an art curator later in life and who is crocheting a Pikachu at home after work for self-care. And during these brief but important conversations, our white coats melt away and the letters embroidered proudly behind everybody's name. MD, DO, MPH, what have you, they all just become an alphabet soup. Now, in your teams, try to embrace play, and I'd like to share one more story from the pediatric hospital this time. Now, I go in to meet my patient for the first time. We're chatting it up, and I point out, hey, I realize there's a bunch of balloons parked right outside your door. What is that about? She looks up from her intricate coloring page and goes, oh my goodness, those, those balloons my nurse got for me from the patient next door who went home yesterday. Can you please bring those balloons in? I love balloons. And of course, I make a U-turn, I grab this bunch of slightly deflated Mylar balloons, and it doesn't take me long to notice that this bunch of grocery store balloons fit right in with all the other bunches that are neatly lining her room. So that 
Later that morning, when my entire team walks in to meet her for the first time, five or six strong, all wearing our white coats right before we walk in the door, we remind ourselves to compliment her balloons, and we get started on the right foot. Now, in your teams, embrace play means maybe asking someone about their balloons or asking what they do for self-care, and it really shows that you care about who they are. And who knows, you might even connect with them in ways that you won't even have expected. Okay, you're holding this ball of clay and wondering, Emily, what, what do I do with this? Well, this brings us to lesson number two. Center your clay. You must center your team on shared values, just as in ceramics, you must center your clay. Go ahead. Take that ball of clay in your hand. Plop it right smack dab in the middle of your wheel. It is okay if it's not perfect. Now take your right foot as if you're driving a car. Press down on the gas slowly to start the spinning. Now take both of your hands, make contact with the clay, and you just stay present, stay steady, You'll feel the clay get less and less wobbly. Good. Now, it's during this step that I think back to being on the palliative care service, which specializes in patients' quality of life. Now, my attending physician and I, we are in the middle of putting on two layers of face masks, a face shield that muffles our voice, even more as we stand outside our patient room listening to the drone of this industrial strength fan working hard to circulate the air. After we get on all of our, our PPE, we walk right in. And there's a global pandemic going on outside. And he has unfortunately caught the virus. But even so, we ask him how his day is, and we make small talk about the orange jello on his lunch tray, and we grasp for normalcy in the least normal of places. And then after a while, we invite him to talk about some, some harder things. We say, sir, we ask this question of everybody in the hospital, and we do not expect this to happen anytime soon. But if your heart were to stop, would you like us to pursue CPR and do other extraordinary measures? Understandably, there's a pause. That drone of the industrial strength fan sounds even louder now. But then we normalize, and we say, sir, we ask that question of our patients, and many of them go, oh my goodness, please do everything you can to keep me alive. Do CPR, I don't care if you break ribs, put a tube down my throat, just promise me you'll do everything you can. And then on the other hand, sir, we have plenty of other patients who hear that exact question, and they say, wow, that sounds like a lot. I don't know that I want CPR, I don't know that I want my ribs broken. A tube down my throat for any length of time is, I don't know, it's not, a quality of life that I would want to live. No, thank you, but I'll let you know if I change my mind. And then we ask, sir, do either of these sentiments resonate with you? And it's with these conversations that we align and we center ourselves on what our most important team member, our patient, values in that moment. And this is important because what he values guides our care plan in terms of whether or not we pursue CPR or any of those additional measures, all of, it, all of which he had decided to forego. Now, as we look down back at this clay sitting in front of you, it's not too hard to imagine that centered clay is mission critical to building a beautiful, symmetric bowl. And it's also not too hard to imagine that misaligned clay would easily cause your bowl and your team to come crashing down and fall apart. 
Okay, we've done a few more steps to pull up the walls of your bowl. Great work. Oh, um, your bowl kind of looks like a Campbell's soup can at this point, but that's all right not to worry. I think you've got the solid makings of a great coffee mug. How do you feel about pivoting and making a coffee mug instead? You've been doing great. I think this will round out our lesson very nicely. Okay, this brings us to lesson number three, our final lesson, be the glue. In your team, strive to be the glue that bonds your team together. Take the body of your mug and your handle, score them in the two places where, where they will meet. Now take some glue or a slip, as we say in ceramics, which is just watery clay. And that'll help make sure that the two pieces become bonded and become one. Now, as you're working on making your coffee mug, I'll share my last and final story. This time, I'm in the family medicine clinic, and I walk in, I see my patient is a young lady sitting up on the exam table, teary-eyed. And I say, hi, my name's Emily, I'm the medical student working with the doctor today, how are you doing? And she musters and, um, I'm, I'm good. She lets out a sigh and her shoulders slump down. And then I go, wait, wait, hold on, let's try that one more time. How are you really doing today? And then we lock eyes and she goes, I am a hot mess. And then we let out this belly laugh so loud that I think to myself, oh my goodness, I hope the patient next door doesn't think we're going crazy. Um, but after that laugh that I think we both really needed, time seemed to stand still. As she graciously shared with me all that was going on in her life. And after we sat for who knows how long, I thank her and I, I tell her I'll be right back with the doctor. So I walk down that hallway towards my attending physician and I update her on, amongst other things, how my patient had shared with me that her brother had just passed away just hours ago and how the familiar feeling of grief has now re-entered her life as painfully as it did this time last year, when her mother had passed away too. Now, with all of this in mind, my attending physician and I go ahead, walk back down that hallway, back to our patient's room, and it's during this time that I realize that as a student, I'm able to be the glue for my team by giving the gift of time on a busy clinic day so that when my attending and I walk right back in the room, she picks up right where I left off and she says, Emily told me everything and we are here to help. Now in your teams, strive to be the glue, be it through the gift of time or the gift of humor or the gift of pumpkin pie brought in on Thanksgiving day because your team still has to work and the hospital can't just close on the holidays. Okay, I see you've got your handle attached to your mug. Great work. Thank you for leaning into your creative side today. I hope you're feeling pretty proud of yourself. Now you have a vessel or a framework for team building. And with these three lessons in your back pocket, I am confident that your team can and will survive the trials of a 2,000 degree oven called a kiln and come out stronger and more beautiful than that ball of clay that every team starts with. Now, go ahead, pick out whichever color glaze you'd like for your mug and it'll be ready for pickup in a week. See you then.